Welcome back, guys. Hey, Hi. I am super honored and super happy to welcome not only my friend, but actress and director of hospitality management and recruitment, Martha Madison. Hi, Hi Martha. Martha. Hi. Very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule being a soap opera actress and all that good stuff. <laughs> How <Not too> <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Um, you can fit a whole day of work in like four hours. It's amazing. Yeah, That's but you have to like memorize like a hundred pages of script, which is they don't even pay enough money for people to <laughs> I couldn't do that. Yeah, our memories aren't as good as what they used to be. I know. Well, I don't I think, think any of us really completely do that. <laughs> 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 as close as possible and make sure it makes sense. So. Martha, literally that just what happened. So I literally just did a call back for a feature film and I was, Adam was like, that's not the line. I said, it's close enough. This is soap training one-on-one. It's around <laughs> yeah. the area and I got to the point. Like, <laughs> just call it what it is. I just did like a, a, a sort of a virtual play and I, it was actually very scary for me to have to be word for word. It took me a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are words? Like, can we just have a conversation? <laughs> so Martha, where, where are you right now? Are you in LA? I am in Los Angeles um, in my new house. This is the second time this year I've moved <laughs> because time in COVID and everything has just been kind of crazy. So are you having to like pack and all that stuff? Cause that's a lot. Yeah. Well, we were living in Texas and, um, when the show went back into production, I couldn't and didn't really want to be traveling back and forth like I had been doing. What, what show, if I might ask, even though I know the answer, <laughs> but for our oh, for days of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am, for days of our lives, yes. I have yes. to say, Martha, before we jumped on here, listen, Braden was super excited. So he knew that you were like coming on. He's like, oh, this is great. And I was just like, he's like, you know, who did she play on days again? And I was like, oh, she, she's Belle. And when I tell you, he lit up like a Christmas tree. So, so he's uber excited right now because he grew up watching you. So me, he and, me and my grandmother would watch Days every single day, literally Aww. every single day. I know the entire storyline. I'm I I still know the entire storyline. It's just That's awesome. my my That's favorite. Awesome. My favorite daytime TV show, so it's a huge honor for me to speak be, to be speaking with you. So, anyway, oh. now that I'm fangirl, <laughs> <laughs> that's so sweet. You know, this was this is a really great thing about soaps, and I grew up watching soaps too. It's this, this one thing that you can really share, this fun thing that you can share with people in your family. So it means a lot to hear you well, say that. Well, I was questioning my grandma because I was like, when I was watching, I was like, I don't know, from age five to fifteen, I was like. Granny, I don't know if I'm supposed to be watching this stuff, even though it's daytime television. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be watching this stuff, but I want to be watching this stuff. So funny. My sister used to give me a lot of flack for watching soaps, and she would say, you know, why are you wasting your time watching that stuff on TV? And well, when I got now. this job, I was like, who's laughing now, folks? Right. Hello. <laughs> hello. That's hello. what I, I used to say that uh, a lot of times, and it's so funny, Martha, that you and I, because we definitely want to get into the background of, you know, you growing up and everything, because we all have something in common. We're all from Texas. Mm -hmm. But, you know... Yeah. You, I'm in Texas right now. He's in Texas. Ash was in Texas right now. Nice. <laughs> um, it's it's interesting because I remember being like I grew up obsessed with the soaps, as you know, and I remember being in high school. And I told the story a bunch of times, but I wrote a letter to you in high school because I was just like, "Hey, I need." That's really creepy. No, 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 because they have fan mail. No, no. It's a whole thing. They had fan mail and I wrote a letter and I was just like, it'll never come back. And I got a signed autograph back from you. Oh, and I was I, gonna, did I respond? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> right. <laughs> just, did I do it? You did. Jerome and, asked me for that stuff too and I just don't respond. Yeah. So well, I'm happy that you did. <laughs> well, you, you wrote back and I was just like, I want to be on a sub one day. And you were like, never stop fighting your dreams and blah, Aww. blah. And I don't think you know how not only that moment changed my life, but I remember I was we were doing the WB, not the W, was it Warner Brothers Studios, the Emmys, and you were about to walk on the carpet, and I was there, you know, I was like, oh, right. there to, I was there trying to network, and I was just like, I got my press pass, hope I can network, and you had me take that off, and you said, come on the carpet with me, and I don't think you Aww. realize how much that moment changed my entire life, and who oh. I am, and honestly, if it wasn't for your encouragement, and you treating me like how I should have been treated, 
I feel like I would have never had the success and what I continue to have in soap. So thank you. I love you. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> I've been wanting to. Oh, that for that a is so time. sweet. You know, I just didn't, I didn't know that. I yeah. Just... So Martha, what, what keeps you like, that's a really sweet story, Jarrell. So like, what keeps you humble? Because a lot of people in Hollywood and in the industry are not that way. No. So like, what about you as a person keeps you humble where you see like, a young star wanting to make it in the industry. Thanks for calling me a star. Oh, uh, I meant like a... Shut up, Brady. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think that you have to... It's a hard business. And we've all... Anyone who you may look at and say, wow, they've, they've made it or they've, you know, succeeded at this thing. It's not uh, without difficulty it's not without challenge and i mean i've been i think i've been fired from days three times, <laughs> two times, two times and kind of back and forth so i'll count that as a third time like you know it's 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 um that humbles you <laughs> you yeah. know and also you know part of being an actor in general is about understanding that you're going to go through these periods of unemployment where you can't get an audition, you can't get a job, and you're constantly like, what's wrong with me? Like, why don't they want to work with me? Or why don't they like me? Or am I too this? And, and so, you know, I think it's never as easy or as glamorous or as, as um, you know, fulfilling as it might appear. It's, it's, it's hard business. And um, you well, are never, you fulfilled? If, you're, if you're doing it right, I don't think you're ever going to forget how hard it is and where you came from. And, yep. Yeah. Do you think that you are fulfilled, though? Because, I mean, on the outside, honey, shit. <laughs> well, I don't, I, I, um, you know, I have a lot of <laughs> neuroses, so <laughs> I don't know that I'll ever be fulfilled. Um, but I, I think that's what motivates I, me. To I can keep introduce going. you to my doctor. There's a lot of medication <laughs> um, <laughs> that can fulfill you. Okay. <laughs> Brain's currently on it. I think, I think my constant need for, uh, to prove to myself and to some people in my life that I can do things is what motivates me to work really hard. Yeah, exactly. So had you been, had you always watched soap operas growing up or, and like knew you wanted to do something like in that genre or is it something that you kind of just like stumbled into? Well, I found acting first. Um, okay. I was a, a very shy kid. I think, you know, that's probably where a lot of my neuroses come from is my childhood. Um, and I, I went through a long period of time where I wouldn't talk. And yeah. so um, I was about six, seven years old, and my uh, dad and stepmother decided to put me in an acting class to see, you know, if that would open me up a little bit. Yeah. And it did. <laughs> so, um, and then, you know, over the summers, but, you know, during school and growing up, we would watch Days of Our Lives, and my oldest sister would watch Young and the Restless, and, mm -hmm. um, and that was just something that we did, and I'm the one that got hooked and uh got hooked on days really um and i watched it every day yes. my whole life until i booked this job <laughs> you you literally have been known as the person on set at days of our lives that knows everything about the show even more like, than you Darrell? even even more than me martha could take me down Darrell knows everything no she she could take it down she's like no this i don't know i mean i i watched i was religious i had a vcr and like a days of our lives <laughs> tape with a timer and then, like, if I came home and it hadn't been recorded, I was the pissed. Original DVR. Somebody was going to get Literally, there was fights that happened yeah. between Brayden and Adam and I. We lived together. And when they would move the VCR, I'd be like, what are you doing? Like, I yeah. need that. I know, like, I this is the touch. one thing. You don't touch this. This That's is the only that. thing I want at the end of the day is to come home and watch my days of our lives. <laughs> You mentioned Young and the Restless. I wanted to know what other soap opera you would love to have been on or to be on in the future. Well, that's the one for sure. Yeah. Um, I was a big Young and the Restless fan too. Yeah. I mean, if I was going to be on any soaps, it, it, I, those are the two that I'd want to be on. I almost <laughs> was on Young and the Restless, um, but what I didn't. What happened? Huh? What had happened? <laughs> I auditioned for the same role that Christelle Stouse um, booked. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not long ago, maybe six, seven years ago, five years, right, something right, like that. Right. Um, you also and she auditioned because she's gorgeous and talented, and it was the right role for her. Um, Did you also audition for Selling Sunset? No. Boy, do I wish. <laughs> 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 I'm like, 
<laughs> Should I go get my real estate license? Maybe <laughs> about the same thing. If I can be a reality TV star and have a real estate license and bank, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it. I had always she wanted to be is amazing. She's so amazing. She's well, yeah. I've I've worked with her in PR world. Um, oh, she okay. amazing, yeah. Oh, I always thought I wanted to be a reality star. TV star. But then, I think you could do it. I because I, I was have like, that bitchiness about you. I, well, yes, and so like because I was like, oh, I want to be on the real world. But then I was like, I don't know, I don't because okay, so you know how in the real world they have like those like glass showers and everybody's like in the bathroom with you and stuff. And so a part of me was like insecure, and I was like, I don't want everybody in the bathroom while I shower, so I can't do reality TV. Well, that's not the case now. Now I'm like, I don't care if you want to come. You, we know. Whatever. Well, my we is, know. my issue is I didn't want to end up like sleeping with everyone in the house. So I, just, I <laughs> that would be you good didn't want to end up. No, no, no. I didn't want to like. I, mean, I thought that would be your key. It objective. would be, but that was the old me. The new and reformed me don't want to do that. That's mm -hmm. the only reason why you would have gotten cast. That's true too. I would have been very much typecast. Um, so Martha, <laughs> going off of that, we were talking about Texas. So we do all have that all in common. We're all from Texas. We are. That's awesome. Yeah. Are, are any Houstonians here? Uh, no, no but no. one of my best for a few of our, you know, Caitlin, yeah. Tyler, they're all mm -hmm. from, they're all from Houston, Sweetwater, okay. and all I'm from San Antonio. Okay, good. I'm from the trailer park, trailer park, Texas. Have you heard of it? <laughs> I've probably been there a few times. <laughs> <laughs> We're related, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, could be, could be. So how was it growing up in Texas for you? Hot. <laughs> <laughs> To say the least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in the suburbs of Houston and, you know, as a, as a mom now, kind of knowing what the priorities are for like raising your kid, it was probably mm -hmm. a really great uh, way to grow up. It was very safe and, you know, lots of families and everything was really family oriented. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew growing up that I wanted to, I did not want to stay there. I, I've known, it's like just been embedded in my DNA that I was going to go to New York or Los Angeles or somewhere where there was stuff happening. I was going to ask what your trajectory that. was like in terms of growing up and getting out of Texas and moving to the big city. Yeah. What well, my mom made me go to college. She said, you can go be, I wanted to be a dancer. She said, you can go do all that stuff, but first you have to get a degree. So I moved to New York about six days after I graduated from college. Oh, wow. And I yeah. never looked back. We did too. It was we like did two too. weeks for us, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was out. I was out of there and I spent the next uh, almost five years in New York before moving to LA. Nice. Yeah, I mean, so you just mentioned dance, which is perfectly up to my question. Uh, so you were the captain of Texas A&M dance team. Gig em. Yes. My little, oh. cousin, my little cousin goes to A&M. And I mean, oh. they're probably they're everybody's oh. cousin. I mean, yeah, I had a friend. Too. Well, anyway, yeah, so <laughs> everybody go to Texas A&M. I love it. What was, what was that experience like? And do you miss dancing? And, and would you do it again? I know that you had an injury and you were just like, I can't. But would you go back and try to do it again? Like, that's crazy. Like that was, that's pretty amazing. That's a huge title. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, that, being a, like in the process of performing as a dancer is really something about that. That was like, that is me. That is the core of who my soul is. <laughs> so I found so much joy and, um, uh, and, and so many friends, um, you know, I didn't join a sorority because I had the dance team and that was, those were my girls, you know, we're still friends to this day, all of us. Um, so it was a great, you know, a, a great team experience, a great bonding experience and um, really was just my passion. Um, and of course, I mean, I, <laughs> you should see my Instagram. It's like everything I follow is dancers. All of, it's be, because I just want to see beautiful things and fun things and, um, I still kind of fantasize about, you know, what that would have been like, but um, no, I think I'm too old to do it now. No, <laughs> you should, you my body doesn't want to do that old. anymore. You should just judge on, so you think you can dance. Yeah. Yeah. Was it yesterday was like dance day? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It was did so fun dance? to watch. Did you dance, Martha, on dance day? I dance every day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's your favorite type of dance? Are you jazz, modern ballet, hip hop? Uh, hip -hop? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Martin's actually a good hip hop dancer. And I was waiting for you to say that. It's like, listen, yeah. the stories I've heard, like I was talking to Sonia um, Blandrado and she said, like, listen, she said at the days at the parties, like they, we get it. And she's like, you need to come over there. She said, cause you over there at the GH party sitting at a table. You need to come to days where it's dancing. I was like, oh, yeah. that's we what were I'm dancing at the GH. At we the were, party. we were the we only sure one. Were. Uh, I was, I guess you could call that hip hop. <laughs> I was, I was literally in the split twerking. And, and Frank, there was a lot of twerking going on. A lot of twerking. I was crawling between people's legs and Frank was like, wow, thank you. Y'all brought the party. And I was like, I don't know how the rest of the cast feel though. I bet they're like, I was like, people? Frank, this is my audition. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, give it to us. <laughs> I love it. So we, so now we, I want to go to like the restaurant world. Cause I know that that's something that, so Ashley and I actually, I think you know this, Ashley and I uh, ate at your restaurant in Los Angeles. Which uh, one? The Luna Park she or said, Henry's? She said which one? I uh, know that's right. Which, she said which one? Um, it was the the seafood one. I can't remember. Oh, Pata was... Salada. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I had a whole fish. I remember. <laughs> I did. Sorry, I'm putting Listen, myself on That black. was one of my favorite things on the menu. <laughs> it was so good. I, I still have the picture of it in my phone. So. Oh, good. <laughs> Yeah, whole fish. We ate, honestly, it's embarrassing what we ate and everything. And your husband, AJ, was so nice. Like, he came over, like, he was there that night. And he was just like, hey. I was like, please don't tell Martha how we're eating. Like, we, the table was covered with food. And it was delicious. That's good. That's a good sign. So how, did, <laughs> how did you get involved into the hospitality and restaurant world being, like, a famous actress, too? Well, <laughs> I, uh, I had to support myself while I was trying to be an actress. Um, so I started working. I mean, my first restaurant job was I worked at Pizza Hut at 16. I worked there for five years <laughs> to help put myself through college. Girl, and, um, good for you. and then I, when I moved to New York, I started cocktail waitressing and sort of fell in with this really important group of restaurant people that I didn't realize were so important. And um, they really started teaching me the stuff I needed to know to really make it in that industry in a city like New York. So I started bartending with these people. I opened seven restaurants with them over that four or five years that I was there and, and kind of rose through the ranks of management and really, you know. <clears throat> How does one open seven restaurants? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. You don't sleep much, but I was in my early 20s, so it was really fun. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, and so, yeah, I loved it. And when I moved to Los Angeles, um, I saw, I drove by a, a place, a restaurant that looked like it was under construction, and I walked in and tried to get a job, and that was Luna Park. That was my now husband's restaurant, so that's where I met him. I was going to ask, that's how you met your husband, was... Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, I love me some AJ. Listen, he's amazing. He's so sweet. He's great. He's so great. I'm How very long lucky. have y'all been together now? Um, oh, well, we that was 18 years ago. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. That's wow. Awesome. Yeah. So we're going to have our 14th wedding anniversary this summer. Yay. Aww. Congratulations. Thank there, you. Is, there is a chance for love. Wow. Now I have something to look forward to. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, that's there's nothing like a good combo between like love and food. I feel like they're yeah. just kind of, maybe that's why I'm still single is because you only love the food like and nothing. No, no, I just I'm I'm intermittent fasting. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. We uh, all are. on both occasions. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> yeah, Brayden's actually on. He's he's on today with it. Yeah, let me let me let me know if you want to hire me because um, I'm available, honey. <laughs> I could be, Same. I could be I, I could be your brother. I could be oh. somebody. Oh, you talking about on days? Oh, that, yeah. that's already cat. That. She's. No. I don't have anything to do with that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. If I did, I'd have, I would have never, never left the show. <laughs> <laughs> you say again. I said three times. They said, "Get out!" <laughs> like, uh, Martha, you. So we actually had. Um, Kirsten Storms on like mm -hmm. a while ago and we as, love as, as we know Kirsten yeah. was the original Belle and you came in and obviously I know this and you you replaced someone who um well she wasn't what the show needed at the Be time kind. no I, I am I was gonna say the person in between <laughs> in between you and Kirsten was not um she wasn't what the it show it wasn't needed. for her it yeah. wasn't for her yeah yeah and that's totally we fine we love that PR key message mm -hmm. it wasn't for her and mm -hmm. so how was it for you coming in 
as that replacement with, with a lot of like, like you're like, I got I to gotta do this. I can't be replaced as well. So how did that feel for you? Was that stressful? I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't remember, you know, a whole lot about how I felt that day, but I, I was so upset the day that I didn't get it. I was, I mean, I really was just, it was one of those moments where I was like, what am I doing this for? Why am I doing this? Like, I'm going home to Texas. I don't want to do this anymore. It was just too hard. I was so disappointed. And so when it came back around, I, I just think kind of a primal thing takes over where it's like, this is it. This is my shot. Like, this is, you're not going to mess this up. And so I think that's kind of the, how, how I rolled into it. It wasn't until a few months in when I started getting hate mail and feedback, you know, no. where I was well, like, oh shit, can, what if this doesn't work? You what know? kind of hate mail do you want to share? Um, what kind of hate mail? I mean, I, I still get, <laughs> you, do? you know, that means it's a testament honestly to how awesome Kirsten is and was at the time in that role. And, um, you know, she really did uh, do something that not many actors can do in creating a role is, is make it, you know, just so beloved and so um, popular and important um, that it's hard to see somebody come in that isn't that, that doesn't share the same energy necessarily, that, that doesn't have the same, doesn't present the character exactly the same way. It's hard to do that. I know I watch soaps forever and I hate it. I hate recast, you know? Yeah. I mean, listen. Um, did they do the whole thing where it was like, the character of Belle will be now played by? I no. actually no. don't mm. think they did. I actually, Martha, I <clears throat> I have your first day on set, on tape. Um, on tape, I, I, I on tape. I, I have, because I recorded an episode, you were in like the little blue dress. I, I, I remember exactly everything. Um, Cause they had to put the other girl in the wig because she had short hair and to transition to you. Um, you know what? I was very excited when you came on because I remember watching and I remember it being such a big shock because I know Kirsten was doing like Xenon and stuff and she was like doing was a lot of things. She was such a huge star, yeah. She was, she was doing a lot and so, Peter. See, yeah, and so, and so <laughs> when, when Charity Raymer came on, I was like, oh, this is fine. And then you came in and I have to say, I felt like you came in pretty seamless. And I thought that you, I mean, you are Belle, Brady at this point like you, you you are that character so to it's, all the people out just there crazy to me Bill Brady okay. brain, brain can't handle it so to all the people out there on Twitter like shut the fuck up because this is <laughs> Bell at this point like she she's not going anywhere she and if they ever continue to as they continue to bring Bell in and out, it will always be Martha playing the role because she is Belle. You and Brandon worked so hard to recreate Shell because I know it was I know it was tough with Jason Cook and Kirsten doing it. So it's just like people kind of have to get over themselves. But before we move on from this, I also want to give you a quick shout out. You stood up on social media not too long ago. Well, first of all, you've always stood up for injustices and racism, and you and Lamone and all of them at Days. I appreciate that. Um, you also spoke out, someone had made a comment um, and um, Kyle Brandt had made a very nasty comment and you spoke out about it. And I was very, very proud because I know sometimes when soap stars and people speak out online, you can come with a lot of hate and vitriol with that. And I really am glad that you were able to say like, that's not okay. Like people don't do that to their co-stars. Like you don't say things. So you've always yeah. been someone who stuck up for like people who are bullied. And I'm happy to see that you did it in that moment and continue to do so. Why do you do that, Martha? Well, I just thought it was really tacky and it's not something that, you know, we work really closely together <clears throat> and we know a lot of stuff or think we know a lot of stuff about each other. <laughs> and, <clears throat> you know, when you're an actor, you are your product, you are your brand. Yep. Yep. And that's, you know, kind of, it's not just about being private. It's about, you know, um, I don't know, it just saying terrible things about somebody's brand, you know, it's, it's libelous and it's, it's, just tacky and gross, but also I think what he was saying had something to do with, uh, you know, he was, he felt bad that he was the only one who wasn't getting laid by his co-star. Yeah, it was very nasty. And not only is that like completely tone deaf in the whole time of Me Too, um, but also just isn't true. I think it's really, um, it's so derogatory to the rest of the cast. And that's just right. not how it was. And, right. you know, I know that he's like, 
a shock jock kind of personality now, but you know, he painted our entire team in yeah. a bad light. And I thought that that was really gross. Yeah, he made it, and, and just to clarify, he made it seem like, oh, everyone over there was hooking up. So like, why wasn't I yeah. having that, that, that opportunity? And it's like, no one was hooking up, bro. Like, chill well, out. Also, why would I hook up with somebody like that? Yeah. Right. Also, he higher wasn't standards cute. than that. Right. Well, he wasn't cute, and also he need to be lucky that he was able to share scenes with you because it definitely helped his acting. That's all I'm gonna say, and I'm moving on. I'm not gonna be mean no more. We're before we, that. before we let you go, <laughs> and I know we're, I know we're at time, Martha. But before we let you go, I want to talk about your MS work that you are doing. Like I know your mom suffers from MS. My aunt also has MS, and you're um, an amazing ambassador for the entire. I don't know, vocalization of the disability. So why and how is that so important to you? Well, so my mom, I, I grew up with a mom with MS and she was a single parent too. So, you know, it was very scary, this idea that, you know, it's so, um, you don't know when it's, you know, when she's going to be sick, you don't know what's going to happen. So there's a lot of fear as a child, you know, without, knowing what would happen if that were to happen. Um, and so I grew up with a lot of that anxiety, I think. And, <clears throat> you know, I coming out on the other side of it uh, and having some kind of platform, you want to use it for good. And, um, and if there's anything I could ever do to help raise money or awareness or, you know, research dollars or anything I could do for that, to spare any future kid that same anxiety, I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so happy to do that. Um, I also work with the Association of Frontotemporal Dementia, which is actually the disease my mom is, is dying from right now. And I think that, um, again, if we can really shine a light on those types of things and, and raise money and awareness, that's, that's all we can really do. Amen. You know, you have to make something good out of such a terrible Thing. And Absolutely. How how is how is your mom's spirits? <laughs> oh well, she's in uh, she's in hospice right now, so it's not not good. But I'm very uh, I just feel very grateful that I've had her for so long, and um, and that she's in such good good hands. Well, thank you for doing all that you're doing for yeah. everyone in the world. But... Prayers for your mother, <laughs> for you and your mother. Thank you. Yeah, it's... I, yeah, I, that, that it ended on a note, I was like, I'm about to cry, but Martha. No. <laughs> My mom would tell you not to cry on TV, right. ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Never let them see you cry. Never let them see you sweat, baby. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Martha, you are such a blessing. I love you very, very much. I love everything you do. And I can't wait to see you in LA because I'm going to be out there in June. So let's like... Well Hit me up, we'll go out. Yeah, yeah, because you know I'm pulling back. Uh, I'm gonna come you know, I'm pulling back. I'm to too, yeah. <laughs> I have to hang out with Martha too. Don't forget about me over here. Yeah, okay, Brayden. You're all invited. <laughs> Please, Brayden will pass out if he can't come. Um, so, Martha, <laughs> you hang out with Bell Brady without me. <laughs> <laughs> he, he won't. Uh, so, Martha, what is coming up for you before we let you go? And then also, the second question I want to ask you is, what does Pride mean to you? What's coming up, and what's Pride? Pride. Wow. I mean, well, what's coming up? More Days of Our Lives, and you can check it out on NBC weekdays. Um, uh, what does pride mean to me? You mean like just the word? Just the word. Yeah. Just the word. Um, going to going to bed at night feeling good about everything you've done and everything you've been. Oh, that's a beautiful. Yes, well said. That's yeah. Awesome. Perfect. That's awesome. I okay. love it. <laughs> so, all right well that's what i got <laughs> martha this has been absolutely amazing thank you for hanging out with us here at pride the podcast i'll text you later and uh, um, i'll see you very soon martha let everyone know where they can find you on social media if they want to follow you and send you lovely things instead of hate messages yes only lovely things and i'm not on twitter much anymore because it's ugly but you it can find me at, at marth27 on twitter and instagram and facebook just at martha madison I love that. Very I think I'm going to change my Instagram name to at Mr. Braden Bradley Brady. Do it. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Bradley Brady. So, the fail. so Martha, when you go on set and you are looking for Brandon and he's locked in a closet and they say, oh, we have a substitute for Sean Brady, it'll be Brayden <laughs> Hello, taking his place. And I probably locked him in the closet. You definitely <laughs> locked him in the closet. <laughs> yep, <in> the closet. <laughs> Martha, thank you so much again. And we look forward to you coming back and hanging out with us soon. 
Yes. Thank you for having me. Bye, you guys. Bye. Bye.